Most time you take for granted the time where you're spending the friends. No, them gone, gone. It's arguably every parent's greatest fear, burying their child. Angela Foster had to do that a few months ago when she was forced to say goodbye to her son, Andre. Andre was stabbed to death at school. Jamaica Day ends in tragedy at the Spanish Town High School, one student dead and a former student on the run. Angela says, ironically, Andre was always eager to go to school. And the day he was murdered was no different. I'm cleaning my shoes and ready, and he come back to me and say, Mommy, give me Angela more. And I say, I don't have any more money. I lost my girl. So then he just said, Later, and he's gone the Friday. I'm going to go inside and drop asleep. But he did happy the day, excited to go to Jamaica day. He did very, very happy to go. She remembers getting the news that her son had been stabbed. When I wake up and come out, stand up right here, so, I get the gate knock, and I look up and I say, Miss, are you a black mother? And I say, yes, I say, oh, you know, I say, because I see him come home at even time. He say, get stabbed at school, and I say, bad. He say, no, no, he say, I put him in a care. So I run and I grab a gun, he say, like, oh, him get stabbed, maybe. He might want to change her, because I know him dead. Growing up in one of the toughest neighborhoods in Spanish town, Angela says she always ensured that Andre kept far from the wrong company. School was the last place she'd expect her son to die. I don't mean, know the next little boy, where my Andre really have. I don't mean, know. But I don't say I kill Andre. I don't mean, say I miss my son bad. I don't mean, know when. I can't do it. Up to, I cry every minute. Sometimes I want to stop and I say, just people that say, I'm, I don't get mad. But when I look, I don't say I always come behind me. I say, Mommy, buy me a juice if I go to Spanish for me. I just stand up and look back and say, Andre, you know, say, I don't have no juice. I just feel it in the back and I just feel of it. Sometimes I think, say, I'm not dead. I just feel say, I'm not dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. Andre died after he was stabbed three times, allegedly by a former student of Spanish Town High School. The case is still before the court. Clayton Hall is the president-elect of the Jamaica Teachers Association. He's also the principal of Spanish Town High School. He says since the incident, the school has taken additional measures to ensure that students are safe. We have actually beefed up our security arrangement. We have added an additional security personnel because we have found an area of vulnerability within our permit of fencing. And we have stationed a guard in, in that location. We have also done routine patrols. We have brought in more chartered security. We have done a review of our physical plant. We have put other strategies in place to ensure that we maintain strict adherence. Our best as possible, we enhance our security features. Peer-based violence is just one aspect of the struggle to end violence in schools. Oftentimes, teachers are either caught in the middle of fights as they try to quell raging tempers or are themselves the target of attacks. Dean of Discipline at the Abotnut Gallimore High School, Gavin Myers, was the victim of a recent attack. Mr. Myers was attacked by five students after he tried to remove them from the school compound on a day they weren't authorized to be there. The boys, when they went downstairs, they picked up stones and started throwing stones. And I, I moved to avoid one stone that was coming towards me. And another stone hit me on the leg. So I... I tried to avoid one and got hit by another. Uh -huh. I suffered some stab wounds and some brown force to my back and also a broken leg. Despite being a part of the Safe Schools program, there were no school resource officers stationed at Abutnut Gallimore at the time of the attack. So, as Gavin Myers nurses his wounds in hospital and his attackers appear before a juvenile court in St. Anne, the Dean of Discipline says he's concerned about the increased levels of school-based violence in the parish. We have a level of youth violence that is really enormous. When you look at the, the mixer zones, the Brownstone, the Sands Bay, the Ocherius, the Alexandra, where a lot of students converge, there is a lot of violence amongst the, the students. And this is not just, just male only. There's females, there's males, and it's not just one school. But in fact, most schools are involved. 
National Coordinator for the Safe Schools Program, Sergeant Coolridge Minto, believes that establishing a partnership with schools is critical in the effort to protect students and staff. A school resource officer with the, with the permission of the principal and, and in, in consultation with the school board went into a school to do a search and came up with 42 weapons. And these, these are knives, ice picks, you name it, machetes, things that students should not have in school. And this was out of the effort of, again, I said, the partnership with the school that says, we believe something might happen. They call us in, we went in, and this is two weeks ago, and we found 42 weapons. There are some 300 school resource officers serving the 160 schools involved in the Safe Schools program. That works out to less than two resource officers per school. This, the president of the National Youth Council, Ryan Small, believes is woefully inadequate to effectively protect teachers and students. That's one of the reasons Ryan Small says the safe school program is ineffective. What we have now is that teachers, whenever there is indiscipline in school or there is a fight that in many occasions would lead to the intervention of the teachers, the teachers are often caught in the midst of it. And when they respond, you know, they're accused of abusing students and so on. But Sergeant Minto points out the safe schools program is more than just policing an institution. The, the school resource officers play, play several roles. One, to, to restore the sort of safety of, of the school environment. And so their presence are there to prevent things from happening. The other matter that is very crucial for the school resource officers, they, they are trained in mediation, counseling, they're trained in conflict resolutions, but it's not just about policing. It's, they're there to be proactive, to prevent incidents from happening, and should in case something happen, the police is right on spot to deal with it. Spanish Town High Principal Clayton Hall says he has seen the benefits of the Safe Schools program at his institution. If you assess the number of incidents that occur inside the school and those that occur just outside our walls. The marked difference is a testament to the effectiveness of the Safe Schools program. Even at the point when we had the incident with that young man, when we went to the hospital, a doctor there remarked to me that things have gotten better because on a weekly basis or on a daily basis, he would have seen many of our incidents coming to the hospital and we have actually had those on the decline. With the education minister suggesting that deans of discipline could soon be getting powers similar to those of a district constable, Ryan Small is hoping that the ministry goes further. The National Youth Council president argues that repeat offenders should be given mandatory military service. You know, we are lobbying the Ministry of Education for the students, these indisciplined students, you know, antisocial behavior, who is in the minority to be enrolled in the military. I mean, we have always been talking about young people um, being engaged in the military, mandatory service for them, but I believe we have to target those who are in discipline so as to instill certain core values and discipline in our young people. So as the Education Ministry goes back to the drawing board to devise ways to strengthen the Safe Schools program and curb school violence, parents continue to send their children to school, hoping and praying that at the end of the day, they'll come back alive. Reporting for Live at 7, I'm Kenil Gale. Hurry up and come back Was the last thing she said to her son The day his life was taken